In this episode of the Clean Code Review, I want to show you how to reduce your time spent in debugging existing code by fixing the design in a sustainable way instead, so that you never need to waste your time again on the same issue anywhere in the code base. Recently we were investigating an issue and we came along this code. It gets two different data structures from two different data sources, both providing a property referencing a test case. On the one hand we have the test data data structure, which provides a property called test fixture name. On the other hand we have the infra failure data data structure, which provides a property called test class name. As the to-do comment already indicates, at that point we were not quite sure whether we were actually comparing the same things here. There are basically four approaches to analyze the problem and to improve the code. But there is only one truly sustainable approach in that sense that you will never waste your time in investigating this issue again. Let's look at each approach one by one. The first and obvious approach is to debug the code and simply fix it accordingly. So let's set a breakpoint and run the application. Now let's inspect the properties of these data structures. We see that the infra failure data data structure in the test class name property only contains the class name without the namespace. When we inspect the test data data structure, we see that the property test fixture name obviously contains a class name including the namespace. So let's stop the debugger and fix the code. Usually we would also add a test case of course to prevent this bug from getting introduced again. But I'm going to skip that here because testing is not the focus of this clean code review. The second approach is pretty much the same as the first one. But additionally we also want to add a comment to improve the understandability of the code and so hopefully avoid similar bugs getting introduced in new code. So let's navigate to the test data data structure and add an API documentation for the test fixture name property. Now let's navigate to the infra failure data data structure and provide there an API documentation as well. Now when finding these properties in the code, we get at least additional documentation. The third approach again starts with debugging and changing the code. But when we think about how to avoid the same bug getting introduced again, we remember that in clean code, whenever a comment is needed to explain the code, we should rather think of improving the naming. So let's navigate to the test fixture name property and rename it to test class full name. And with this we can also remove the comment again. Naming is not always as easy as it may seem, because natural languages are usually not super precise and the meaning of a word often also depends on the context. In this case, if we navigate to the infra failure data data structure, we realize that the property name test class name alone still doesn't make it obvious that the namespace is not included. To improve this, we could change it to test class simple name. This name seems to be better, but what exactly does simple mean in this context? So maybe we should go with an even more descriptive name like test class name without namespace. And then we change the other property to test class name with namespace. Which leads us to the fourth approach. All approaches so far require debugging time, only slightly improve the code itself, do not ensure that there isn't other code which needs to be fixed as well, and also requires additional testing effort. The only sustainable approach from my perspective in this case is to fix the design to prevent such an issue from getting introduced in the first place, which is stop using simple strings to represent test fixture names. Therefore I'm going to introduce two small records. One record called test fixture name, which contains a property for the namespace as well for the class name. And I use this record for the property in the test data data structure. Now I can also simplify the property name again. And I'm going to introduce a second small record, which is called test class name, which only contains the class name. And I'm going to use this record for the property in the infra failure data data structure, which allows me to simplify this property name as well. Of course these are compile breaking changes, which I do intentionally so that the compiler now forces me to adapt all the usages of these change properties. With this design change I have not only ensured that all existing code gets adapted, I have also improved the readability of the code without the need of additional documentation. And I have prevented the same bug from getting introduced again. Moreover, this approach actually not even requires any debugging of this code, assuming that the code creating the test data and infra failure data data structures already knows whether the namespace of the test class is available or not. 
And what about writing an additional test? I would tend to save even this effort. But before deciding that, I would apply one more improvement to the design, which I have explained in this video.